All right, so I'm going to review some of the steps I have here. Just looking at your layers, you can really set up your digital painting any way you like, but this is how I like to do it. First of all, I like to have a blank white layer at the bottom that's locked that I can't paint on. Then I put a gray background on top of that. And that's because if I only paint on white, I'm going to have a really hard time seeing the highlights and it's going to, everything's going to look kind of darker than it should. So that's why I put a middle gray behind it. And that helps me see things that are darker than middle gray and lighter than middle gray. But I keep both so I can kind of see how that works, right? I also, I keep my references locked all on one layer. And mostly these references aren't to look at to paint from. That's why I have this open in preview because this is my hero reference. It's really to steal colors and get certain details from. So at any time, if I need to, I can unlock my reference layer and I can move it down closer to what I'm painting. You see how it will run behind what I'm painting and then lock it. Makes it easier when I'm zoomed in using Command Plus and using Spacebar to move around to steal the colors I want. And I might, I don't like how this is overlapping the head, so I might grab this on my reference layer and just move it around. So feel free to, to move your references as you need, right, to make them convenient. Okay, next, I did a sketched line layer. And I did that in a really bold color so it was easy to see on top of my hero reference. You know, this kind of thing. And so that I used to start filling in my shapes, right? But I like to keep them as separate layers because my sketch line I'll usually turn off completely, but I'll keep my shape painting. So it's the difference between starting it this way versus starting it this way. But they can also be blended together, right? It's just usually my sketch line will have kind of analytic edges and joints and things that I don't want to be visible in the final painting. So I'm going to lock that, move it behind, and turn it off, right? This early shape painting sketch, you can see <coughs> this I did as rotoscoping but I don't like the proportions of it. If I were to work to just finish that up, the head would be way smaller than I want it proportionally. So that's why I used that and I used warp to make it so the head's a little bit clearer. Even though this is based on a photo, this is gonna give me more of the kind of portrait of my cat that I want, right? So you always have control that way. And now I basically got it <coughs> So it's mostly filled in. What you see that's not filled in is, is gray. So this is a nice trick. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my lasso and just roughly select around the shape of my painting. kind of on the inside of my edges, right? And then I'm gonna go to my gray background and I'm gonna duplicate that selection. I have to unlock it before I can duplicate. And then I'm gonna lock both of those. So what did I just do? I just created this, right? This is like a background color kind of filling in my cat with gray. Then I'm going to soften its edges a little bit by unlocking it, going to filter, and saying blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm just going to blur it out, just like we did soft edge duotone. Now what's nice about that is when I do my shape painting, now you can see the grays filling in behind it versus without it. See the difference that makes. And that will help me in my next refinement steps. So I'm going to lock all of that. And I'm going to keep working on a gray background. 
with my references. And now I'm going to lock my, my base painting. So really, this is what's called base color in painting. It's all filled in. And I'm going to move my sketches just into a folder so I can lock it and turn it off until I need it again. OK, so now I might want to make my painting bigger. Because if I'm going to go to all this effort of digital painting, I want it at high resolution. So I'm going to take that gray background shape, this one, and this one. Right. And what I'm going to do is basically merge them together. Select them both, Command E. This is my base color now. It works on white, it works on gray, it might even work on black. You see? Now I'm going to take that base color layer and I'm going to Command T. And I'm going to grow it to fill my canvas. 11 by 14 by 350. And that softens all my base color strokes a little bit. This is all just on one layer. This is just to get me started. And now I'm going to lock that base color layer. I'm going to turn my references back on, and I might need to move them up again so I can see them and steal from them. Right? And then you decide what background you want to paint on, whether it's white, black, or gray. I might actually take my gray and take its opacity down a little bit. So it's about there. That's kind of easiest on my eyes. Shows me the difference. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that. Lock everything you don't want to accidentally paint on. And now I'm going to add a new layer on top of everything. And this is going to be my refined paint layer. Some digital painters, they like to create a new layer for every new thing they're painting. I don't. I like to treat it more like a traditional painting where you have your base layer, you let that dry, and now I'm going to work with refinements on top. So what does it mean to refine something? Well, right about in the middle here, this moves to being refined. Refined means that you can use full spectrum anywhere you want. Refine means that your, your brush is less opaque so that you can do variations and you start blending color and you start defining more detail up until the very end. So I have my reference nice and large on my screen. And now I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to use my custom brush and I have two custom brushes, right? Maybe I'll switch to this second one now. But what really matters are the brush settings. So I'm going to set the shape dynamics. First thing I do is I change the control to pin pressure. So it can go small to big, right? Next, I'm going to play with the size jitter. Take it up to about 20. Angle jitter. Take it up to around 20. Roundness jitter. Quite, quite a bit to about 90. And then I can even add in some texture, right? Just like I did before. Play with the depth, take it to around 20, 13. Play with the brightness. This is going to be my refined brush. So I use it smaller and less opaque. Nice. And then I'll keep smoothing on. But now instead of it being at 100%, I'm going to shift it more to like 70%. And use it a little bit smaller, more zoomed in. Oops. Okay. So now... 
looking at my reference, start stealing some color. Now I'm going to do some refined painting. And I'm going to use, because especially because it's just a black and white tuxedo cat, I'm going to try to add a lot more color into it as I refine these shapes with smaller strokes at lower opacities. And you'll see the colors start to blend with each other, right? So I can start stealing colors from myself. And as they overlap on other colors, this gives me new colors to play with. So that's why I say, especially at the beginning, don't be afraid of bold colors because they're just going to get kind of blended into each other by the end. And we're trying to create an image of what we want to paint, but we're also trying to create an interesting paint surface. And the direction of the brush matters a lot. Right? So I try to, to match the movement of my hand so that the brush strokes go in the direction of the thing I'm painting. So if I'm working on the jaw here, I try to kind of mimic the fur on the jaw. Same thing with people's faces and like their eyebrows or their skin cells. There's always a direction to things. Now here's the big difference. This is what my refined paint layer looks like. It's like a smaller brush. This is what my base color looks like. The two of them together start to, to give me the, the finish I want, the clarity I want. With highlights, with shadows. And if you've never painted at all before, not just digitally, but in any way, this will all be pretty weird to you. And it takes practice. But if you have painted traditionally before, this will feel pretty familiar. You're just building up layers of refinement and layers of color. Don't let it be too weird. Just have fun with it. Don't get too precious. Now remember how I said you're going to be tempted to go right for the details? Try to treat everything a little bit. So instead of getting seduced by the eye and the face and staying there, I'm going to try to deal with the less interesting parts, like the ear, and give it some color, give it some texture, give it some tonal variations. You can steal color from yourself, you can steal color from your own references. And there's just going to be a lot of this. And I'll keep talking through it, just kind of cognitive modeling what I'm thinking as I'm making different choices. But this is usually when I would put on music and just just kind of relax into it. It might be a little early to do whiskers, but you can see how your custom brush makes that pretty easy and pretty believable. The reason it might be a little early for that is I also still want to paint and develop this texture between them. But that's what refined paint is about. And usually I'll have more than one refined paint layer, but we'll, we'll get into that. I want to treat everything equally. So as I'm layering these colors, I'm inventing new colors, you know, that I can then steal from because the opacity is only around 70. In fact, I'll take it all the way down to 70. And so these colors combine. That's why it's really important for me to be able to steal colors 